women get broken and they do things that are not even like their character to do. Jesus, as a good father, looks and says, I will forgive you if you'll let you, just let me help you. Because you don't know what you're doing. See, when sin, when sin keeps, is being allowed to grow in your life and you keep practicing one little thing, the next little thing will lead to another little thing and everything gets worse and it grows and it's a snowball going downhill. You look back a year later and you say, that's not what I used to be. What am I doing? Why am I taking valiums and why am I shooting up and why am I using language I didn't used to do? And why am I hateful to people? Why, why, why? This is not like me. You've said that and your companion probably has. It's not like me and it really isn't. You just really aren't aware of what you're doing because you're broken, you're pulled apart. You're a person you don't know. You're Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde story. And you don't like the person you've become. You know, the Lord wants to do a miracle for you. Oh, you say, Daddy, but I'm a born-again Christian. I, I realized that. I was too. Through it all, I still was. The Lord still loved me. He wasn't mad at me. He loved me. And he wasn't going to give up on me. He never did. Thank God he never did. I really was born again. But I felt like a little much like the prodigal. I was eaten of the husk of the swine when I could have been sitting in a mantle with my feet on the table having lamb chops. I could have. Thank God I got hungry enough that I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up. I can see in my mind's eye my father's house. He's got servants. I've got a brother there and parents there and he's, he's looking back. He said, man, they got money to spend. They got all kind of food good clothing and here I am starving to death and hungry and cold and everybody's rejecting me. My money's gone. And I know I look like a tramp. I smell like a tramp. And I'm not worthy. And I'm going to tell daddy that when I get home. I'm going to go and go back. So he got up. Climbed over the fence of the hog pen. Looked down at his ragged clothes and his long dirty beard and his dirty body and smelly and frail body. But you'll love this. This will encourage him. When he got in sight of the father's house. This is wonderful. The father had to have been watching many days, many weeks, because once again, dad went out. He was looking for him. There's party and laughter going on inside, people around, but Dad just looked every day for that boy. He walked outside this particular day. He looked coming up the hill. And even in his shams and rags and filth, stooped and skinny, Daddy knew him. See, our Daddy knows us. No matter how bad we get, no matter how dirty we are, no matter how broken, no matter how poor in spirit, our Father always knows us. He's aware of where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. The Father ran. He said, that's him. That's my boy. He's coming home. This, I love this part of the story. The Father in his royal robes and his golden slippers, his well-groomed hair and his well-groomed manicured nails. Rich man took his garment from off his own back and ran to his son and covered his son in his own robe. And you know why Ruth and Rose and, and Brenda, do you know why he did that? So that the servants and the other boy wouldn't see his son's dirt and filth. It's a spiritual comparison of you and I. And when we come to him and say, well, I'm hungry and I'm coming back and I'm going to get this straightened out. He'll meet you. You don't have to go chasing and looking for him and wonder where he is. But he'll come out first and meet you. And he'll say, oh, come here. He'll hug you and he'll, <laughs> he'll take his robe. 
it'll just cover over your brokenness, your hurt, your bitterness. And he'll put a ring on your hand and golden slippers on your feet. And Oh, and I feel the Holy Spirit is witness here, girls, of the healings just moving through the audience. Oh, yeah. And he'll holler out, set the table, get the finery, get the golden candelabras, and put on the finest carved candles, and get out the fatted calf from the stall, and, and prepare him for a great feast. Get the dancers, the musicians, and oh, let's make merry, because Joan has come home, Barbara's come home, and Dottie is not hurting anymore, and she's not hating anymore, and she's not bitter. They, they've come.